Hi, I'm Steve Olin, Product Marketing for D-Link. Today I'm going to show a quick demo of our surveillance mode graphical user interface. The switch that I'm using in this demo is our 10-port DGS 1110MP PoE switch. And here's my test network. I've got eight different IP cameras connected to the switch. The surveillance mode UI doesn't replace the standard mode UI that our customers are already familiar with. At any time, you can switch back and forth between the two modes. Here you're looking at the standard mode. It's a tree structure menu and pretty much all text-based. Now compare that to surveillance mode. The surveillance mode presents most of the same information, but in a more graphical format. It's intended for surveillance system integrators that are setting up and configuring surveillance networks with IP cameras. The first thing you see here is the network topology. The switch has performed an on-VIF auto-discovery and identified eight IP cameras that are attached. Notice that most are shown in blue. This means they're PoE powered. Green, like this one, means they're not PoE powered. Any icons in red would mean a malfunctioning device. If I had other on-VIF devices on my network, like NVRs for example, they would show up here too. I can mouse over each device and the UI shows me the camera name, its IP address, and the PoE information, how much PoE power is being consumed. Being able to find out a device's IP address right from this screen I think is really handy. On port 2, for example, I can see the IP address for this camera is .22, so if I want to communicate with that camera directly, I can just open a new window in my browser, type in its IP, and go configure that camera. We're not just limited to D-Link cameras either. I have another vendor's camera attached here to port 8, and it's represented by this generic camera icon. Notice that it has a static IP address on a completely different subnet from all the other cameras. But no worries, the switch can still see it. Something else I can do from this screen is to enable and disable PoE power on each individual port by clicking on the port. Here I'll click on port 1 and turn off that camera. On this second tab, we have device information. It shows information about the switch, like serial number, IP address, MAC address, firmware version, etc. Below, we can see total PoE utilization for the switch. Out of the 130 watts of PoE power available to me, right now I'm only using about 13% of it. Below that shows bandwidth utilization. Since I don't have any video streams running right now, this shows zero. Some other menu items of interest here. If I select PoE information, I'll see more detailed information about each port. Port 2, for example, the PoE is on and delivering. It's capable of providing up to 30 watts, but the camera is an AF device needing a maximum of 15 watts, and it's currently consuming 2.5. The PoE scheduling section lets me set up time profiles for each port, so I can set a schedule to turn on and off the PoE based on my particular application. And here's another useful feature, the Health Diagnostics section. This is helpful for installers who need to troubleshoot their cables. I can have the switch run tests to check on cable faults, as well as tell me the cable length. There's a lot more to show here, but in the interest of keeping this video short, that's as far as I'll go right now. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll find this new surveillance mode very helpful in your upcoming network installations.